I'm Danny, aka Topless. I'm hiking the Pacific Crest Trail from Mexico to Canada. I'm 700, wait, I'm 1,710 miles in. I'm seven or eight miles outside of Ashland. I'm in Oregon now, first full day in Oregon. And uh, I was going to show you where I camped and what I came across last night. So last night after hiking an extra three miles, I came across this. So this is a, a small cache of food. So this is basically some trail magic. Um, I wanted to say something about this. This is the wrong way to do it, okay? Somebody took a bunch of food and just laid it out in the woods. This will attract animals. This can cause problems. If you ever decide to do trail magic, please put it all in a cooler or a five gallon bucket with a lid, something like that, and then put a big rock on it. That way animals can't get into it and won't smell it as much. But regardless, I came across this last night and it was exactly what I needed. I grabbed some food and then I figured out that the campsite was like somehow down this road or something like that. But I also spotted this little tiny path that led right up to where I ended up putting my, up my tent. So last night ended on a high note with holy cow trail magic. Oh, holy cow, a place to put up my tent right now. It's 6.30 and I'm. what's really got me rolling this morning is that I wanna get to Ashland and get a haircut. And if I can't get one today, I'm making an appointment for tomorrow because <laughs> I've been trying to do it for like a month now. <laughs> so yeah, let's go. <laughs> When I was editing the video from yesterday, I read the sign on the border and realized it is less than a thousand miles to Canada. That's really friggin' amazing. I, I remember when I made it to my first thousand miles, I just couldn't believe just how long it took and how much was involved and all that. But with every hundred miles that has gone by, it's gotten faster and faster. So right now, less than a thousand miles to the border seems almost like nothing. Like I do say 25 a day, six days a week. So what is that? Four days to do a hundred miles, two more days, that's 50 more. So 150 miles a week, 300 miles every two weeks. I'm gonna get to the border in no time. Like a little over, yeah, about a month and a half which is exactly what I'm shooting for because I want to get there before the last week of April, excuse me, before the last week of September because I've got tickets to Synergy, which is the Vegas regional Burning Man event. So I'm right on schedule and it just seems more and more doable every day, which has been amazing. Also it helps that, <laughs> I mean, I just skipped 50 miles of trail closure and smoke and stuff. So that kind of like improves my numbers every time. But I think total, I've skipped 250, which is pretty good. From what I've heard, a lot of people consider, you know, uh, a through hike on the PCT involves 300 miles of fire and smoke closures. So to get to the border, with anything around 300 miles of skipping because of fire is basically just par for core. Par for course. <laughs> My words are coming back. I'm almost awake. <laughs> By the way, while I'm thinking about it, yesterday I was reading The Untethered Soul. Holy cow, what a deep book. It comes, it's talking about basically how you have in your head a narrator, narrating all the time. It refers to it as your inner roommate. It questions whether or not this inner roommate is on your side or against you, if it's making your life better or worse. It questions what's the function of the narrator. And then it asks, who are you? Are you the narrator? Or are you the one listening to the narrator? And in the end, you're the one listening. You're the witness. So because you're witnessing your thoughts, you can actually choose to change them. And that's super powerful. I've heard this before. I mean, ultimately, the biggest thing we have in life 
is the power to choose. Specifically, the power to choose our thoughts, the power to choose our reactions or actions. So when your feelings are going nuts on you and your narrator is going nuts on you, you have the power to step back and witness it and then say, what do I choose to do here? And it's really powerful. Because when you don't do that, you just get stuck in reaction mode and you start doing just random things based on a random circumstance. Lots of stuff you'll probably regret. <laughs> so yeah, it's been really cool and it's been it's done a great job about talking through that narrator. And then it pulls in trauma from the past and things like that and how the, the narrator is gonna keep bringing it back up until you work through it. So one of the messages in the book is not only you're not the narrator, you have the choice of your actions, but also if you have trauma, it's not gonna go away until you purposely work through it and let it go, which is a great message. I'm, I don't know how far I am through the book. I'm on like chapter 10 maybe, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I knew I would, I've read it before, but I couldn't remember all the details behind it, which is why I started it over. And yeah, I'm definitely enjoying it. Great message. I've also kind of dovetailed it with, uh, what was the other one? The other book that I just read called When, when Things Fall Apart. And she has a cool meditation practice where she labels the narrator thinking. So uh, specifically during meditation. So she's got a bunch of meditation techniques, but she says, okay, you're, you're meditating, your mind wanders and something comes up. Just witness it, notice it and say thinking and just let it go. Don't judge it as good or bad. Just note it. Oh, I'm thinking. Okay. And get back to the meditation. And it's a great way to learn how to focus. Great way to keep your meditation clear and also not judge yourself. The more you can practice that sort of thing, the more you can do it in your daily life where you'll just be basically spiraling on a bad thought or some emotion or something like that. You'll be able to say, wait, wait, I'm, I'm thinking. None of this even matters. My mind is just making things up right now that don't even matter, that never will happen. Things like fantasizing about you know, having an argument over again and stuff like that, like thinking and you just let it go and get back to being present. So those two books combined, I'm having a, I'm really glad I read them almost back to back. I just double checked my map app and uh, it was seven miles from where I woke up to a place called Callahan's and it's like a, a ski lodge slash restaurant or something like that. And it sounds like it's a great place to get a hitch and also to get a meal. So in about six and a half miles from here, I'm gonna be turning off for that. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. They also said that they, they allow camping like on the back lawn or something like that. So I wonder if I could get into Ashland, get the things that I need to get done, done like a resupply and a haircut and then get back to Callahan's and throw up a tent. That'd be great. But also, it's Friday, and yesterday was my birthday. And I met somebody on trail yesterday whose birthday is today. I almost feel like, wouldn't it be great to have a Friday night with a bunch of people? So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, this is a little interesting. So the trail led me literally next to this big cabin and then down here to this cabin. But it leads me like right to their driveway. And now that I'm here, I see, oh, PCT. I literally walk across their driveway and down these steps, I guess. It leads to a picnic table. Well, it led to a picnic table and a water source. Huh. Oh, and look over here. They've got a greenhouse. 
There's chickens. Huh. Like I feel like I'm on private property almost, but it's clearly the trail. Where is this going? <laughs> okay, across another driveway. I mean, clearly I'm still on the PCT. Huh. And now it feels like I'm right back in the woods again. Interesting. Alright, I found the, the trail to turn out for the Callahans, so it's got me walking under the I-5 and uh, it seems like it should be up around this corner. Alright, this looks like it could be it. Is this the lodge or is this the restaurant? Does this roof match over here? Well, no, I think this is clearly Callahans, so let me go check that out. Oh, I see two hikers' packs, so I must be in the right spot. Haha. <laughs> awesome. All right, I just got into Callahan's and I found some other hikers and guess what? I found Tree Beard Whoa. and Good Snacks, who's now Scout. Yeah. Sweet. Check out the video with them in Hiker Prom. I'll post it in the description. All right, let me give a little more detail on that. So Tree Beard is basically the one who instigated the whole Hiker Prom stuff. Um, he says he's a facilitator and uh, <laughs> he basically just got, got the party together and happening. Um, this was back in Bernie when everyone was staying in the church. So go look at that video. Uh, Good Snacks was uh, one of the two women who was walking around with a tray full of bacon wrapped dates offering a hot date to the prom. And I happened to have a photo of both of them in that video. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm really excited because just bumping into Treebeard, he's like, oh, by the way, there's a party tonight. Let me send you the details. So I'm, I'm going to another hiker party tonight and check out this invitation. So it says wear anything but clothes and drink out of anything but a cup. So that's going to be fun <laughs> We're to, to figure that one out. Uh, I definitely want to get, I want to stop by like a secondhand store and get just some new clothes because I'm really tired. I feel like these are so boring. Um, and yeah, so haircut, clothes, party. No idea where I'm staying tonight, uh, but but whatever. <laughs> I'm also gonna looks like I'm gonna try to catch a ride with Treebeard and Good Snacks, whose name is now Scout. She decided now that she's in Oregon, she's changed her name. Um, we'll see what happens. If not, I'll end up catching a ride with Soundtrack, who I just met this morning, who has an, a ride coming an hour from now. So I can't believe the restaurant's not open though. Ah. To finally get to civilization and not have a restaurant? Wow. But at least I got free coffee. That's, that's not bad. Thank you for your patience. How can I help you? Hey, I just uh, uh, scheduled a haircut for myself at 1220, and you told me there was a 12 o'clock and 1240 available. Correct. Are they still available? Uh, they are. All right. How about a 12... 40. Actually, you get back that little bit? yeah, uh, no, not for me. An additional one, and this one's oh, under okay. the name uh, Topless. You have a topless coming in at 1240. Yes, I just got an appointment for a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> What's the dog's name again? Uh, name is Bella, or I Bella, the trail name of uh, Wilson a couple years ago. Uh, she is too cute, yeah, she's totally deaf, though, so you can call her. <laughs> She's deaf, so you can call her whatever you want. I'm gonna call her adorable. Aww. Aww. More than appropriate. She's 17 now. 17? Wow. That's older than me. <laughs> Dude, I'm totally getting my laundry done. I'm totally getting a haircut. And I'm totally getting a shower. Oh, it's such a good day. All right, I've got a shower. I didn't shave. I'm going to ask them to kind of like trim it down a little bit at the haircut place and then shave it later because it's just too much for my razor right now. But I've got a place 
and uh, uh, going to do a resupply. Everything is just coming together so fast and so perfectly. <laughs> I am curious about this party tonight. Wear anything but clothes, drink out of anything but a cup. I don't know what to, to wear. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stop somewhere and pick something up. All right, finally, shower, haircut, shave. Check it out. Ah, uh, I feel human again. I also got a resupply while we were out there at the, the haircut place. So I'm set. Like, honestly, I could get back on trail right now if I wanted to, but I don't because tonight there is a hiker party and I need to figure out what the heck I'm gonna wear. Like, no clothes, drink out of nothing but a cup. I'm not sure how to figure that out. Like wear nothing, wear anything but not clothes. I don't even know what to do. Like, I guess you could show up in a towel uh, or like a cardboard box or something. Wow, uh, I'm gonna have to look around. All right, I just took a walk to the grocery store thinking maybe I could find some duct tape or something. And instead, I bought alcohol for the party. So, <laughs> so I got a case of beer and a box of wine. But I also bought this bag here, if you look. It says, it says, I'm organic. And I thought, what if I cut the bottom out of this and just wear that, like, skirtish pants thing? Uh, that could be an outfit. So that's where I'm at right now, <laughs> is wearing a a shopping bag or that says I'm organic on it. <laughs> it's a rare sight to see. It's so relaxing. Thank you. Holy cow. There is a bottle of vodka in this watermelon. Well done. This is like a college party. <laughs> Hold on, I love this. She's fixing her outfit with Luco tape. This is Cricket. He's the one who does the rainbow rocks. I've been following you for hundreds of months. I love the rainbow, man. Thank you. Holy crap. Okay, time out. There's too much of this party I can't show you. So basically, <laughs> as the night evolved, costumes just broke down and fell off and things like that. And so I basically just can't post footage of the party because I feel like I would be breaking people's privacy and... I teach consent and boundaries this on my other channel, kikipolyatheist.com. So yeah, there's a lot, a lot of footage that you're not going to see. <laughs> but I could tell you some fun things. So for example, uh, there was a woman who was wearing paper bags, like, um, like from the grocery store. She was wearing paper bags, and her costume was very slowly deteriorating and falling off. So at some point, I just said to her, well, you want to trade costumes? Because she was like shy and didn't want to move. So I gave her my costume, so we swapped costumes. And it immediately enabled her to have a fun, like, jump around and dance at the party because now her costume wasn't falling off. But the moment we switched costumes, someone walked by and just snatched the bottom off of me. So I had her costume on for maybe three seconds before it was destroyed. <laughs> so now I'm just walking around a party in my underwear. Um, other good stuff. <laughs> there were people wearing adult diapers. I kid you not. And uh, it was hysterical, but I'm not going to post photos of them. That's not cool. There was definitely dancing on countertops. There was definitely breaking a lamp. <laughs> there was a someone dressed up in the type of bag you'd put a birthday present in, including the tissue paper, which looked really cool. I think I could show you a picture of that. Um, someone wore a tent. Actually, it was really well done. Uh, she she made it look like a dress, a backless dress, no less. That was really cool. Uh, lots of people wearing Tyvek, like togas. Uh, <laughs> you saw that uh, one of the people here that I stayed at the, the hostel in, um, 
he wore his backpack. The bottom of his backpack had a zipper on it so he could open it from the bottom. So he wore his backpack like an outfit. And then somebody else put the backpack on while he was in it. So I think we had uh, Tova basically just lift, like do a deadlift of Yeti wearing a backpack. It was, it was pretty awesome. I wish I had a picture of that. Maybe I can ask them for one. Somebody found the type of life preserver that you'd wear on a boat, like that just kind of goes up around your neck and then down. And that was their top. Lots of making things out of boxes, um, like the type of snacks that we have here on the trail. So we had someone show up in a top made out of like Pop-Tart boxes and vanilla wafers and things like that. Uh, skirts made out of Thermarest uh, pads that you would sleep on. Um, Oh, two people showed up. They, they clearly stopped at the post office. So they had post office boxes, but they also had bubble wrap. And so a lot of their outfits were bubble wrap. And all night long, pe people were allowed to just pop bubbles on their outfit. Uh, and they used a lot of the stickers that you would use to um, send postage and things like that. They just wore them like they and so and drew on them and stuff. So like they had like almost like a, a football player has like black, the eye black. Um, they did that with stickers on both sides. Uh, there's so many good things. <laughs> so ultimately, the outfits were, were awesome and outrageous, but they were also deteriorating and falling off people. So uh, I'm not posting anything on that. Music was great. Uh, whoever had the playlist going, thank you very much. It was great. Uh, it, was, it was wear anything but clothes, but also drink out of anything but a cup. So I had a, a, a tube of Lay's chips that looks a lot like Pringles, only it's plastic. So I drank out of that all night. Some of it found, uh, I kid you not, like a whole uh, coffee pot, like from a coffee maker for like $2 <laughs> at a thrift store. So she was walking around with a whole coffee pot all night. Um, someone had an upside down cone, uh, like the kind of cone you put on, the, on like an area when you're working out or something like that, um, or to mark out like a soccer field. Uh, and of course there was lots of like Talenti and cold soap containers and things like that. You no know, regular camping stuff. <laughs> that was good. Um, but yeah. Anyways, whole thing was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you again to Treebeard for just making magic happen. And for all the people who contributed and whoever let us use that Airbnb, thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I am seriously considering asking Treebeard where he's going to be next and like what town and what day and just just pace him for now on. <laughs>